If you just purchase one of these uh, Chinese delights for £1.50, it's worth giving it a go, so it is. I've had mine for about 150 miles, that's what I recommend before it starts working. To be honest, can't see much difference, but we give it a go anyway. Here's how you install it. You find your onboard diagnostic 2 slot, which in my case next to the fuse box. It's usually underneath something around the dashboard or under the pedals. Somewhere hidden, somewhere silly. Right. Find the slot. Stick it in. We should get it right around. And it lights up. Isn't that lovely? And that tells me it's all connected and ready to go. And in the manual it tells you, leave it for five seconds, find the reset button, press that, uh, for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. In this case, I'm using a screw. Don't even think it fits in there. And that starts flashing. And it says leave it for then another 40 seconds. Then you turn your engine on. So I'll do that. Now that is apparently communicating to your ECU, remapping it, allegedly. So give it 40 seconds, turn your engine on, and it says you've got to drive 150 miles for it to totally remap for ECU, and you'll be doing nitro blast to hear the kingdom come. Or in this case, you probably won't see much difference. But, you know, if it does something small, insignificant, and it's worth giving it a go, the problem I found is that it keeps flashing even when your engine's off. But I've had it in now for a couple of weeks and it doesn't run the battery down. So a little LED as much as what your alarm flash does when your key's not on the engine's off. So uh, yeah, there it is, that goes back in there. Like that. Oh look, it's flashing again, doesn't it? Oh look, I'm doing something. It looks all legit, doesn't it? But I don't know if I did that before. It's wiping everything, my car won't start. Oh, I think it's safe to turn the engine on now. So it says put it to the second position but not on. Let's see if it does anything. So it's all on. Still flashing crazy. Not doing a lot else. Usually it just used to flash on off. I don't know what, that, what that's doing. I'll tell you what start the engine as well. Well it seemed to have like that. And then it's back to flashing again. So I'll show you that's done. So that's how you install a Nitro ODB2 1.50 job from China. Job done. Today we are installing one of these tasty morsels. It is the plug-in and drive ODB2 economy chip tuning box. It's a mouthful, isn't it? And what it is, it claims to save you money on your petrol because petrol is getting more and more expensive these days and it's getting the pain in the ass. The all instruction on the back, you can get them from eBay for about two pounds or three dollars. They're readily available. If you get them from the UK, they're about five to ten pounds. But if you want to wait a month to a year, then get them from China. Anyway, this is what we do. We take it out of the box, use a sweat. It's really hot on here. <coughs> And we got this. Now, for the purposes of the video, I've already done this, so we're going to do this. We're going to take it apart to show you what is inside it. It's just like that. Look at that, lovely. And uh, yeah, it's a little tiny green chip board with a couple of chips on it and a flashing light. So, what you want to do is a little hole there, you can get a dart in there, or do what I did. Board a 
pull it apart. I mean, that's weird, isn't it? Because in on the chipboard, it actually says nitro. I never saw that before. Because I don't know if you saw my other video. I've done a nitro ODB2 one as well. And uh, to show you how to install it the right way. The right way it says anyway, on the back of this um, instruction manual, on the back of it. But yeah, very strange. There's nitro on there. So, hmm, a bit dubious. Anyway, to work. This goes in your ODB port, usually under the pedals or near the fuse box. This is a Honda FRV. So that is here. I do believe, I hope it is, just under there, that is in, and what's it doing? Not a lot. Right, so on the back of the box, it says put it in, start your car, but I don't, don't need to start it, sorry, just put it into the second um, switch, so everything comes on, lovely, and we get down on the floor, and sort of read, it says, so this is the common mistake it says wait for 30 seconds or actually it's got to be about a minute for it to start working right and I'll show you the reason why now if you can see it all lit up that's claiming to be reading your ECU but you've got to press the reset button now the common mistake is you've got to hold this down for 10 seconds Then they go. The way it starts flickering again. So that's claims it's reading it. And there you go. That's installed. But now you've got to wait the minute. saw the orange light go out there you think that's done because that's what it tells you on the box but I know for a fact we're doing tests with my um, Torg this thing here I've got the Torg app the mini ODB2 reader and that um, sends me information from my ECU to my tablet through Torg Google Play app you can get the pro version about three pounds very good very worth getting it's brilliant that, is tell that tells me my miles per gallon See, now it's flashing on and off sort of like that. I mean, it's installed properly. And it, it does work, not as much as it claims though. I mean, it claims here to, to save you, was it 15%? But to be honest, you know, I drive exactly the same way all the time. It does save a little tiny bit of fuel, but not as much as it claims. I mean, you could just say that, you know, this is wishful thinking. You're driving differently because the chip's installed. I've, I've got the proof. Of another, there's another video I've got. That's with a Ford Galaxy VR6 using the Torg app on my channel. Give it a go, and that is uh, proof that these things do actually work. They're not as good as they say, but yeah, give it a go. It's cheap enough. As long as you install it correctly, it will work. Thank you very much.